in college football. And it's an atmosphere like this. And it's pretty easy to get a football team juiced up and ready to go. The Tigers won the toss, deferred their option to the third quarter. So they will kick it off and Wake Forest will start with the football. Returnable from the seven of Christian Beal Smith. And he'll fight his way close to the 25 yard line. So the Clemson defense, which last season was the best in college football, and lost seven players to the NFL, including their entire defensive line. Well, it makes no difference. You replace those seven with seven new players, and Dabo Sweeney's got a group that's putting up fewer points per game this year than they did last year. How much of that is a reflection of the ACC and their schedule? Well, they're one of two teams to not allow 300 total yards of offense in any game this season. And it's not an accident. Those two teams, along with the Buckeyes, are in the current top four of the college football playoff rankings. Flags on the opening snap of the game. Ball start. Offense number 59. So Allison, it's first and 15 now for a Wake Forest offense that's without two of their most important weapons. Yeah, it's going to be a tough task today for Wake Forest and their offense. They're without not just two of their top receivers, but two of the top receivers in all of the conference in Sage Surratt and Scotty Washington, both out with injuries. And head coach Dave Clawson said it drastically changes the formula to win this game because they no longer have those guys on the edge that can go out, go up after jump balls and win the contested passes. He said we may even change our tempo a bit. Don't expect them to go as fast without those guys. Quarterback run for Jamie Newman here, and he gets bottled up after a gain of two and a half to three yards. So, Dan, how much more pressure is on the redshirt junior quarterback, Jamie Newman, without Washington and Surratt? A ton, right? Elevate everyone around you without your two premier receivers. And so he's got to trust his eyes. He's got to trust his feet a little bit more. And then he also has to trust his play caller to make sure that he's not asking him to do everything by himself. You got back up here fast. Yeah, I'm impressed. Know, 40 guy. Ah, absolutely. At least a 6-2, I would say, at the combine, right? Killed the combine. Killed it. <laughs> that must have been fun down there. It was... That was one of the coolest moments in my life. Outside of my wife and I getting married and having kids, it's up there. Cade Carney, nowhere to go. He lost a couple of yards back to the 20-yard line again. Xavier Thomas comes through to make the stop. And now it's third down and 14 for a Wake Forest team. Again, without Scotty Washington, without St. Surratt. They trail Clemson both in points and total yards per game in the ACC, but that's the only team they trail. Normally, this is a Demon Deacon offense that can put up some numbers. That's their 11th best pass offense in the country when you have Scotty Washington and Sage Surratt because, hey, you, we could just throw it out there to them, right, and go jump ball. You go win it. And so now they've got to overcome having that ability or that inability to do it today. And they're going to go conservative with Carney on third down and long. And send the punt group out there just to try and get field position on their side. My, my, my heart rate still is, is going from being on that hill and in that moment. My, the goosebumps, the hair is still up on the back of the neck. The heart rate still hasn't gone down. What a really incredible experience. It's hard to look at that scene now and envision where there was room for a football team or you. <laughs> I asked the kids down there, I said, hey, uh, anything in your life up to this point even come close? And they said, not even in the same conversation. Amari Rogers driven all the way back to his own 20-yard line. Heck of a punt for Maggio. And Rogers gets loose. Rogers with a burst. Runs a man over and finally gets brought down inside the 30-yard line. That was the punter, Don Maggio. That did what he could to save a possible touchdown. A 52-yard return after a 59-yard punt. How about the blocking? Out kick your coverage in a way. The ball is kicked so far. Rodgers fields it. Couple blocks. Catch a seam. Run through somebody. What an outstanding start for Clemson. Get off the field on third down. Huge punt return. And now your offense is completely in the go zone. 
the number one scoring offense in the ACC, number five in all of college football, at least for the moment without Amari Rodgers. After the punt return, seem to be favoring that right shoulder. Here's Trevor Lawrence on a quarterback run right up the middle. And he gets hit hard right about at the line to gain. It looks as if that is good for a Clemson first down as Trey Rucker made the stop. And on senior day, it seems only right to honor a senior offensive line. Senior Layton, four of the five starters are four-year players. And when you talk to everybody around the ACC, they say the difference between Clemson today and three years ago is they have the best offensive line in the conference now. That wasn't the case in 2016. Deeper into the red zone goes Travis Etienne. And we talk all the time about Trevor Lawrence, rightfully so, and Travis Etienne, rightfully so, and this, the talent at wide receiver. But the reason why this is one of the most complete offenses and then football teams in America is because that offensive line is so dominant in every aspect of their game. Play action, slant, goal line, touchdown, T. Higgins. Just a little RPO, fake to ETN, that safety jumps up. Easy throw to T. Higgins, and the strong hands. See how strong his hands were on that catch? Can't make the mistake of giving up the big punt return and giving that offense a short field. It's just a license to get beat. Easy offense. Welcome back to Clemson, where the Tigers have taken the early 7-0 lead. Touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence to T. Higgins, and while we were away, the quarterback for the Tigers went into the injury tent as he walked off the field gingerly, to say the least. Dabo Swinney went in to check on him. We believe that hit on the first snap of the game was what had him feeling not right, to say the least. That was a pretty good layout by Trey Rucker, that safety from Wake Forest. Hopefully it's just precaution, right? Hopefully because of the hit, you take him in there, make sure you can have a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Are you good to play? This kickoff from BT Potter will go through the end zone for a touchback to come out to the 25-yard line. All right, so for Jamie Newman, now he's down by a touchdown. Again, without Scotty Washington, without Sage Surratt. What have to be his keys today to get Wake Forest in the game and keep them in the game? You lift everybody else. Don't use the fact that those two guys are not playing. Affect your performance, but bring everybody else along. Really, what safety for Clemson is going to be the guy that dives down to help on the run? Clemson is going to come after you. Brett Venables will blitz no matter what the situation. The best way to hurt it is take off with your feet and run against it and take advantage of some holes. He's going to take a shot down the sideline. Picked off. Tanner Muse. He trapped Jamie Newman into a pick right along the sideline. And Clemson has the football again in plus territory. And Trevor Lawrence is out of the tent. He's ready to go back on the field. Really good discipline by Tanner Muse. Just reading the quarterback, Jamie Newman's eyes. He had Waydale Jones earlier. Put it on him late, and then Tanner Muse, the big 6-2 safety, do it all for Clemson's defense. Easy interception, but that comes because he's doing what he's supposed to do. Fourth interception this season for the Thorpe Award semifinalist, Tanner Muse. And it sets up Clemson in plus territory, and that gets the quarterback on the phone. as Trevor Lawrence back to work. Tien stiff-arming his way through the secondary. And he's got a first down and then some down to the 22-yard line. Picks up 19. How about that? You don't see it often in college football. The center pulls. The tight end wrapped right behind him, J.C. Chalk. And then count up many times today that Travis Etienne runs through that first initial contact. You, you Very rarely does he get, go, get brought to the ground on that initial hit. There he is again. Again, dragging tacklers for a gain of five. Travis Etienne came into today with 1,214 yards rushing on the season. And he has now gone over 800 of those yards this year after first contact. 
That's a good season. If you rush for 800 yards, it's a pretty good year. He's got 800 after strong. Just contact balance, strong, run through arm tackles. Best tailback in the country. I think Wake Forest heard us. Look at ETN, though. Avoid the tackle for loss. And he actually picked up about two and a half yards. Tyler Williams had him back near the 20-yard line. He couldn't bring him down. That's full body strength. That's just not, we talk about tailbacks all the time when we talk about lower body strength. That's full body strength. That's upper body strength. Get off of me. Bench press. Rare physical talent by now. Third down and two. ETN right up the middle at the goal line. Bulls his way in for another Tigers touchdown. Tanner Muse with the pick set it up. It's already. We've got a 14-yard touchdown reception by T. Higgins and a 14-yard touchdown run by Travis Etienne. And it's 14-0 Clemson. Way to turn a turnover into points. That drive was all Travis Etienne in the big offense. Welcome back to Death Valley. Bob Wachusa, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams. Sometimes those headphones help because it gets loud in this building. Again, Dan Orlovsky was on the hill for the senior day run on. And the Tigers coming down the hill after touching the rock. And your first trip here, I don't think I oversold it, right? The atmosphere that you get here at Death Valley? You undersold and overdelivered. <laughs> and you sold it high. This is uh, this is special, man. I, driving in the car yesterday, came into the game today. I said, I've got three sons. All my three sons go to Clemson. <laughs> They've already completed the recruiting trip? Yeah. And Wake Forest will step on down by a couple of scores. We'll find out. All right, Wake's going to blitz. So if this guy blitzes, this defensive end is going to loop in. I want everyone to watch Ingram and Price, the tight end and tackle. Look at the wash down as they go through. When this guy, defensive end, look at on your block. There, there. Easy run for ETN. Really smart by that offensive line and tight end. The blitzers have to move. If I know where they're going, I can take them where they want to go, create bigger seams for our tailback. Christian Beal Smith looking for a seam up the middle, and he picks up four. Christian Beal Smith, the ball carrier. Wake Forest trying to get into a formation that they can find a matchup in, and Clemson doing a nice job of matching to their personnel, not giving anything away. Here comes the blitz and getting lassoed behind the line and brought down is Beal Smith. And Xavier Thomas with a tackle for loss. Now it's third down and long after a four-yard loss. And, and Clemson knows how to attack this mesh point, RPO mesh point. Watch, Xavier Thomas, no hesitation, blow up the mesh. If you're going to take that long time that Wake Forest does with the handoff and the long mesh, the best way to defend it, go blow it up. To Clemson, they've got a 14-0 lead over Wake Forest. And after the first touchdown, we saw quarterback Trevor Lawrence go into the injury tent. After this last touchdown, he came to the bench, sat down. A couple members of the athletic training staff were looking at his right knee. He's wearing a soft brace on that knee. The kneecap is exposed. I could see it, guys. It's definitely bruised. Watching him on the sideline, you can tell it's bothering him. Although he was able to stay in the game and engineer that last touchdown drive for Clemson, it was Christian Beal Smith who was shaken up for Wake Forest. So he's on the sideline. Kate Carney back in, and it's third down and ten. Rising up in the pocket is Newman, and he's got nowhere to go. Fights his way back to the line of scrimmage, but it will be a three and out for Wake Forest. Really good job by Brent Venables. They decide to come after Jamie Newman, but also spied him with James Skowski, the middle linebacker, made sure there wasn't a seam that he could escape to. Everyone rallied to the quarterback, good coverage on the back end. 
this will be a theme throughout the day. There's not a lot of guys that get open against this secondary. Maggio out kicked his coverage. And he may have done it again. Rodgers again driven all the way back to the 16-yard line. And this time, a much better job by Wake Forest to change field position and make the play on special teams inside the Clemson 20. And tonight, a matchup of one of the top teams of the Big 12. And which of those teams has the best shot at the college football playoff? Tonight will go a long way towards telling that story. Oklahoma Baylor, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. And the ESPN app, Saturday Night Football, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Is there a way for Baylor to slow down this attack? Baylor's got an outstanding defense. The biggest thing is every play, you have to know where C.D. Lamb is. That offense, for all of its glamour, and greatness, it runs through C.D. Lamb. Know where he is, and he'll take you to the football. Trevor Lawrence with all day to throw. A rifle strike for DeAndre Overton. And that's good for 12 yards and a first down. 14, on the tackle. Good job by Trevor Lawrence there. They put Overton to the field by himself. And this is a staple of this offense for Clemson. They put receivers to the field. If you're going to play them one-on-one, -on -one, they're often going to throw it there. Goes, comebacks, outs until you stop it. ETN. Picks up five. Travis Brought ETN. down by Nasir Greer. Nasir Greer. Five yard pickup. Now, a lot of times that sleeve is just to make sure there's no kind of swelling or anything it's a bad sign yes because anytime you have to put on extra equipment is a bad sign but it's also a good sign that it's one of those neoprene sleeves hey just pull this on there's nothing too concerning tied to that etn again another first down for clemson and they're making it look very easy against this weak defense here in the first quarter and then the line of scrimmage change like the, the, the offensive line is just pushing wake back Ridley, the left side with Jackson Carmen, this young sophomore that they believe has become the future star up front for them. And then Etienne is doing a really good job of hugging blocks. And they're asking secondary players, corners and safeties, to try and tackle him in open field. A screen perfectly set up to J.C. Chuck. And the tight end comes up about a half yard shot. The first down picks up nine and a half. Jasir Taylor made the tackle for Wake Forest. Last year, Clemson went to Wake and won 63 to three. 63 to three. They had three different 100 yard rushers in that game. ETN was one. And ETN already has 61 yards rushing here in the first quarter. And that was game was only seven nothing at the end of the first quarter. In, in what Wake Forest and Dave Clawson realized was we came after Clemson too much. We, we gave up way too many big plays because of the blitz, and they're, they're going to try and play a little bit more patient today defensively. Lynn Jay Dixon. It's a fresh set of downs for Clemson. And, and you see Dave Clawson clapping right there because he's telling his defense, like, that's our game plan today. That's, that's okay. I know they got a first down, but we don't want to give them the easy touchdowns. We've got to try to make them go on 12, 13, 14 play drives. Easier said than done, but if you do that, they consider that a win today because this offense is based on explosive plays. Lawrence on a rollout. Dumps one to the left flat and misses Overton. Our first opportunity to get an update from Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Bob. This Drive It Forward update is brought to you by CarMax. Number 18, Memphis taking on Houston over on ESPN2. Clayton Toon takes off 68-yard touchdown run, and Houston up 14-7 on the 6-1 Tigers. Keep you updated, Bob. Dan, back to you. All right, Cassidy, thanks very much. Lynn J. Dixon. Still in the game next to Lawrence in the backfield. He'll take the handoff and go up the middle. And now it's third down and eight. And Dan, to your point, you want to force Clemson into some long, multi-play, double-digit play drives if you can. Well, the defense has not given up the explosive plays. They throw an interception on their half of the field. And they give up a 52-yard punt return on special teams that gives Clemson the short field. Yeah, and put your defense in bad situations. They actually thought they really had a good game plan coming in today. They just have to try and execute against a dynamic offense. Here comes the blitz. Lawrence in trouble, and he's sacked back at midfield. Ryan. 
and Smenda drops him. And that's a big stop for Wake Forest defense as they will force a punt. With the left end, Smenda comes off. There's got to be a miscommunication by that offensive line and tailback Lynn J. Dixon. Who has the end man on the line of scrimmage? Trevor Lawrence, he's thinking that guy's blocked. But Smenda comes unblocked. Nice job making sure you get the quarterback down on the ground. Second sack of the season for Smenda. Will Spires will punt it. Kendall Hinton is down at about the Wake 10 yard line. Spires fumbles the snap. It's down on the ground, and there's a scramble for it all the way back inside the Clemson 30 yard line. So a special teams error for Clemson becomes an explosive play that Wake Forest needs, and now they'll start with the short field offensively. What a mistake by Spires and the opportunity for Wake Forest to capitalize on it. Just goes right through his hands. He watched it down, right through his hands, big bounce, scrum to the ball. And now Wake Forest has a huge opportunity because they're one of the better teams in the country in taking turnovers and then converting it to points. Huge moment for this football team. Don't be surprised if they take a shot. Two deep safeties for Clemson. And a delayed handoff. And that's Beal Smith. He picks up about seven on first down. Check that. Kenneth Walker picks up seven on first down. He's bummed. Yeah, I mean, that, that is, and I don't think it was a focus thing. I watched his head go down as he caught the football into his hands. Just one of those things where he dropped it. Now it's quarterback run. Well done by Jamie Newman. Fights his way all the way down to the 11 yard line. And it is an unusual mesh point on the handoff for Wake Forest when you're watching. If you haven't seen Wake Forest play so far this season, and you see this really slow developing exchange, what's the advantage there? Well, you're holding those, whatever the safety is backside or front side, the seventh or eighth guy that has to come into the box to stop the run, you're just holding them off. And that long mesh keeps going, and you watch these safeties just, they, they're not aggressive downfield or down towards the ball, and it just holds them off, and it's a big advantage for this offense. Walker lost a couple of yards. But Tanner Hughes really, came through to make the stop. That's how you blow it up. Like, that's how you, you send people at that mesh point, and you don't necessarily Watch declare you've got a certain person. Blow the mesh up. We saw it from Xavier Thomas the previous drive, and a great job there by Tanner Muse. You can't play hesitant defensively against this type of mesh RPO. If you're getting guys Clemson-wise to automatically commit to the mesh point, is it not a play-action opportunity and a throw over the top? 100%. The stress is on the outside. Both both corners are going to be stressed and a safety, but you got to trust your corners that they're good enough to shut down the receivers. Instead, it's Walker and the freshman trying to weave his way for a couple of yards. Skowski made the stop. May have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. That's third down and a long 10, close to 11. And normally, this is... Because of Scotty Washington and Sage Surratt, you feel okay about this situation because as you tell your quarterback, hey, if they come after you, give, just throw them an opportunity ball, which is exactly what Venables likes to do down in the red zone. I expect him to come after Wake Forest, and one of those receivers has got to win on the outside in replacement of the two big... Watch Dave Clawson up here as he runs down to the official. Wants to confirm this is a big play for his offense, third down this early in the game. Let's make sure we get a timeout, get it to the right personnel, the right formation. Remind Jamie Newman, Clemson likes to do this kind of stuff down in the red zone. Good use of a timeout, let it pay off here for some points. Third down and 11 after the timeout, trying to pay off the muffed punt snap. Newman, batted ball at the line. And they'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. So it looks like Spires and the muffed punt snap is only going to cost Clemson three points. Tyler Davis knocked it down at the line. Good rush by Xavier Thomas as well. 
Watch his eyes, looks to the right. Tanner Muse is coming from the right side of your screen. Tyler Davis, outstanding job of knowing I can't get home, getting that paw up. But man, Jamie Andre Newman's lucky that ball was batted down because I think Tanner Muse is not only going to pick that, but he might go the other way. 30-yard field goal attempt for Nick Skiba, who has made 27 consecutive field goals, tied for the longest streak in the country. And trying to set a new mark. As he usually is, right down the middle. They do pull that off this season. That'd be three out of the last four that the college football playoff and championship would run through Death Valley. Yeah, but they play in a really bad conference, right? Like, isn't that what everyone says? That playing a really bad conference. Blah, blah, blah. This is one of the best teams in the country. This, this team and Ohio State are the two most complete football teams in America. Skiba with a returnable kick. Very on Kendrick. He bounces outside, maintains his balance, and gets across the 25-yard line, out of bounds at the 27. Another update from Cassidy. Thanks, Bob, to a big one in the SEC. Number four, Georgia taking on number 12, Auburn. Jake Fromm with an absolute dime to Dominic Blaylock. 51-yard touchdown. Georgia can clinch in the SEC East with a win up 7-0 early. Bob, Dan, back to you. Dan, earlier this season, we called the South Carolina upset of Georgia, and we wondered if that wide receiver group for Georgia was ever going to be good enough to create explosive plays against the big-time competition they were going to see the rest of the season. Well, they did it to Florida, and now they're doing it to Auburn as ETN picks up about three and a half. Guys, Wake Forest defensive coordinator Lyle Hempel told us they'd use a lot of movement up front. They just don't have that size to line up and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Clemson offensive line. It's creating some confusion. Trevor Lawrence is talking to his offensive lineman quite a bit on the sideline individually and then collectively with O-line coach Robbie Caldwell, just making sure they are clear what their protections are and communicating them appropriately as Wake Forest moves and shifts up front. Let's see what happens here on second and six. Lawrence... Well protected, now the pocket starts to collapse, and down he goes. Another sack, this time it's Rondell Bothroy. This is something that, I mean, watch Trevor Lawrence peek to his right, come back to the left, almost lose the football. I know that's a sack. But I think there's the opportunity, second down, get the ball in your hands. There's completions there that are short that you can get the ball to and avoid ever getting taken to the ground in that set. This is a good job right here by Trevor Lawrence. He knows he can take the quarter. We can use it as a timeout. They're showing us some pressure. Good job managing the moment. So third and 17 for Clemson, all of college football. But a chance for another stop for the Wake Forest defense. As we open up the second quarter, Bob Shoes of Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams, third down at 17. Lawrence with a check down to ETN, and they get him on the ground. And they do. Yeah, but a couple plays ago, you're in this situation because on second down, you've got JC Chalk open, and watch Dabo here. Chalk, Chalk is open. Chalk is open. He's telling Trevor Lawrence on that second down play. It's second and seven. We call a basic play. No, it's not a glamorous throw, but you can get it out of your hands. Three or four yard completion at worst, and the sack never comes into play. Uh, this is a big growth department for him. I think he's, he's got to be willing to play a little boring with the football at times. That decision making for Trevor Lawrence, when you watch him on film, still not quite where it could be. Well, because the expectations are so high, but yeah. Yes, like where we expect it to be because he's such a special player and it's the it's the things that he'll get it's not a lack of intellect he'll get but it's just playing quarterback rather than being such a special thrower of the football short punt takes a Clemson roll down at the 25 yard line so in total it's 43 yards and time now for our athletic trivia question the last Wake Forest head coach to win a road game here at Death Valley 
You actually did know the answer to that. Normally, when you have known this season, it's because you've stepped out, cheated, looked at the card, and <laughs> pretended like you knew. But this is actually an answer I will give you credit for knowing. I was impressed. Knocked you down to build you up. Like, yeah. totally assassinate my care character on national television, man. Wake Forest gets something going offensively. They only have 19 yards of total offense. Shovel pass. And Carney falls forward for about three yards. Tanner Muse with another tackle. Well, Clemson continues to dominate first quarters of play. The number one scoring margin in all of FBS in the first quarter. The only team to score a touchdown against Clemson this year in the first quarter. North Carolina, the only game that's been a game for them. Newman, incomplete. A.T. Perry, the intended receiver, so now it's third down at seven. The pressure, the pressure just, it's non-stop from this defense. Venables will come after you. First down, second down, third down in all kinds of different ways. And the reason he can is because the secondary and linebackers are so good with their communication and understanding how to replace when someone leaves. And you're going to see it on third down. Pressure's going to come. They're going to play man-to-man -man coverage. Here comes the blitz. And getting buried behind the line is Newman. It's Tanner Muse. He was the last blitzer. He was a free runner. And Newman had nowhere to go. A loss of eight. What outstanding disguise by the Clemson defense on third down. Look at the safety in the middle field goes to his right. Muse comes, the end drops. That doesn't happen by mistake. Jamie Newman never sees it because it doesn't look like it's supposed to happen. But the nonverbal communication that goes on with this defense, they know where I can come from, who's supposed to cover me when I go. It's a special back seven, as good as anyone in the country. Another terrific kick. Darian Kendrick all the way back inside his own 20-yard line. As Maggio with another bomb. Kendrick, crab crawls out to the 22. CC Saturday night primetime matchup on the ACC network. Here in the ACC, it's Clemson. Obviously the class and then some of this league. With a 14-3 lead in the ball back in their own end. And Jay Dixon, he's caught behind the line. Brought down by Tyler Williams. It's a loss of four. Outstanding by Tyler Williams. Saw the pullers by the offensive line. He just beat the back block by the center, Sean Pollard. Just beat with penetration. He got a little skinny. Tackle for loss. This Wake Forest defense settling in, playing well, keeping their football team in the conversation today. Timeout called by Wake Forest on defense. So we'll step aside for just a moment as well. Game on a Friday night, but Dabo Sweeney is there watching his son along with three of his assistants, including Brent Venables, who all have sons that play for Daniel High School. It was a playoff game last night, and it was a nail-biter, guys. They had needed a goal-line stand from their defense to win 27-22 and advance to the third round next week. Dabo said he hasn't missed a game all year. Most coaches haven't seen too many close games this season. Travis Etienne right up the middle, and he's got a first down. Trevor Lawrence has not taken a snap in his college career in the fourth quarter where he's been trailing. I mean, just ever. Wrap, wrap your head around that, right? You know, uh, and, and again, they've played in some really big football games over the last two years. Just the success that this football team has had under him is incredible to think about. There's a quick hitter, T. Higgins. He's to the 40-yard line and picks up about six. Do you think that, that Dan Daniel High School for... Coach Swinney and, and Venable's kids, do you think they're struggling for like equipment or they probably got some pretty sweet gear, right? You know, I would be so paranoid to be a coach on that team, right? You just make just the absolute wrong call. You turn around and you see those two guys up in the stands looking at you, giving you the, what were you thinking? Screen pass to ETA. Lockers out in front. Breaking tackles. Spins down to the 42-yard line of weight. 
Marquez Williams made the stop. But ETN picks up 18 more. That's what, something that Trevor Lawrence does really well is utilize his body and his eyes on plays that people won't pay attention to. Like that, that run by ETN, he takes that snap. It looks like it's going to draw hard to his right, pulls the defense that way. And the same on the screen. Catch the screen, he stares one way, the defense flows, and it just creates bigger space for ETN. Lawrence off play action. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. Incomplete. Overthrew T. Higgins. As intended for T. Higgins. Incomplete. Perfect play for the coverage. They got a post over the top on a safety plan, a quarter of the field. Left guard John Simpson had just been beat. Right when Trevor Lawrence is about to throw that ball, he gets hit. Good effort by this Wake defensive line. or staying relentless after Trevor Lawrence. Clemson will come back to that. Could be that same kind of RPO draw right here. And there it is, and Jay Dixon inside the 30, tripped up at the 20 yard line. It's amazing how effective they can be when they spread your defense out and get one of these running backs in space. You're exactly right, Bob. Like every receiver is basically on the sideline. Look at Trevor Lawrence, stare to the right, the guy, the nickel back on the right side of the field. First and ten. Jaquez Williams has got to go all the way out that way, and then there's just this massive space in the middle. I also love the fact that they used it once in this drive and came back to it, never let Wake adjust on the sidelines. There's the slant, and that's incomplete. A rifle shot for Joseph Ngata, but the true freshman couldn't hold on. Pretty good coverage that time for Nissan Bassett. For Joseph Ngata. Incomplete. He's saying Bassey's a good corner for this Wake Forest defense. They're trying to get just rebuild him a little bit, get him healthy both physically and mentally. He's been attacked a little bit, if you want to call it, the past couple weeks. So this week in practice, they make sure he got plenty of rest. So he was able to play capable because he's one of the better corners in the ACC when he's feeling right. A swing pass to DeAndre Overton. It's inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line, about four yards shy of a first down. Sear so Greer, Travion Red, were both there to combine on the tackle. So here's a big stop opportunity for a Wake Forest defense that's trying to keep their team in the game, third and four in the red zone. And, and they love to do two things down here on kind of longer situations. They rush three, and they drop eight in coverage. When they do, they're going to play a, a cover two, two safeties have the field to expect Clemson to put that safety in a bind. A blitz off the edge, and Lawrence gets bottled up behind the line, hurls it to the sideline to J.C. Chalk, but he is brought down well shot of the first down. Travion Red came on a blitz, couldn't get Lawrence for the sack, but blew the play off. Well, they send it back this way, okay? Send it back this way. Watch this guy as he blitzes. Right there, Trevor Lawrence, your throw's right there. You have blockers right there. Easy touchdown. Not seeing things exactly the way you want them to. Instead of 35-yard field goal opportunity, and Potter puts it through. So it's a full two touchdown lead once again for Clemson. Made the video on. And then today she came to the game, and she got to meet her lookalike, Trevor Lawrence. Even Coach Sweeney gave her a big hug. I think he asked her if she can sling it a little bit. I mean, she looks like him. Maybe she's got an arm like him. I think she's an athlete, apparently a volleyball player. But she has blown up on social media. There is Bella taken in the game. And Trevor even admitted to me, guys, he's like, yeah, I mean, she does look like me. He's not going to deny it. I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's really accurate. I, <laughs> he had a great sense of humor about it. I also now don't feel quite as much like my father as I did a couple of minutes ago because Allison didn't know what a tic tac is either, so. I know what a tic tac is, but I have no idea what a tic tac is, and I'm not sure I'm 100% greased on a do double, double danger, double ganger? Yes, no, say it again. I got what a for you, Bob. It's a double danger. Yes. None Allison. of us are the target demographic for TikTok. Allison, do you agree that Bella Martina, according to Dan, is the doppelganger? <laughs> we need to work on his vocabulary yeah. a little bit, don't we? The man is just <laughs> sad in so many ways. Why can't we just say look alike? We can, Dan. For yeah, you, we will. Exactly. <laughs> Forest down two touchdowns at their own 25-yard line. Christian Beal-Smith. A couple of yards. 
And Wake Forest's defense has played a much better first half than that scoreboard would lead you to believe. Clemson scored two touchdowns early with a short field off the turnover and a long punt return. If they could just keep this game in a field position game and their offense could get anything going, it could get interesting. Quarterback run. And Newman's got nowhere to go. And now it's going to be third down and long again. You're right. Wake Forest's defense, because they've confused the quarterback a little bit, especially on third down, and they've gotten him. But they've run 17 plays, and 14 of them are runs. Like it's, I know that they want to slow the football game down, but Brett Venables is making it very clear. You're not running on us. And so you're, you're going to have to be willing at some point to put in there a little bit. Are you expecting a third down blitz again here? Yeah, third down blitz. If, like, Wake Forest has got to be willing to run it on third down a little bit and try to catter or counter some of those pressures. And here comes the pressure. Out of the pocket is Jamie Newman. Trying to get to the sideline. And coming back to help out the quarterback is Kendall Hinton. Well, of those top three receivers with no Scotty Washington and no Sage Surratt, Kendall Hinton is still out there as you would think the go-to man today for Newman. A really good job of moving the pocket. And Kendall Hinton, for a guy that used to play quarterback, is becoming a very good route runner. Sudden at the top, good drop of his hips, and obviously a huge conversion for this offense to maybe start getting some plays called. Duking for three and a half yards is Beal Smith. And guys, Kendall Hinton is really one of the only receivers that has any sort of experience out there. It's a lot of young guys trying to step up for the guys that they're without. And there's a lot of coaching when they're on the sideline, including from Scotty Washington, who's on the sideline wearing that boot and just going over some technique with some of the younger guys, telling them some moves, some routes they can do to try and get some separation out there. Newman avoids a sack does well to pick up about two and a half to three yards and it was Xavier Thomas blowing up that mesh point in the backfield. Imagine being the tailback. You know, just because this long mesh, watch Xavier Thomas on the right side of the screen, bop! And just being like, okay, did you take the ball? It's, it is a very unique style that they run and it's difficult on defenses, but if you're willing to attack it, you can get home. Third down here, with pressure coming, their quarterback run, pop a run against it. It is a six-man rush, and it is quarterback run, and it is short. About a yard to a yard and a half short. Well, Don Maggio has been a field position changing punter so far in this game for Wake Forest. He's got a 59-yarder, a 60-yarder, and a 61-yarder. Do you kick the ball here? It yeah. looks like that's what there's no will question do. on punting this football with Maggio the weapon that he is You can hopefully pin Clemson back in their own end zone and your defense has come to play today, right? So continue to put your defense out there and force Clemson to operate and execute against it Don't put your team in a bad situation. I like this decision Maggio is on the Ray God award list for a reason and That is another very good-looking kick is it going to stay out of the end zone? It will not. It takes a Clemson hop into the end zone, so it will come out to the 20-yard line. NFL countdown. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Lawrence out of the pocket. And he's going to run for a first down and get bumped out of bounds along the sideline after a gain of about 11 and a half. Nasir Greer ran out Trevor Lawrence, but that defensive front for Wake almost had another sack. They're doing an outstanding job of dropping underneath where he's looking, but the right knee looks fine. An outstanding job of really getting out of the pocket and making something happen when the, the receiver that he wanted wasn't there. That is ETM. Forward progress for three yards. Suleiman Kamara was the first there along with Carlos Basham. Now this, this defense for Wake Forest just got to continue to hang in there, right? They're, they're executing their game plan exactly the way they want to. They haven't given up any big plays against this Clemson explosive offense. Just make them continue to earn yards, snap the football again, keep everything in front of you, and they're doing a good job of it. 
receiver screen, Justin Ross. Short of the first down. That'll stop the clock, at least for the moment, with 3.53 to go in the first half. Clemson has all three of their timeouts. Wake Forest has one timeout left, and it's third down at two. That was not a happy head coach over on the Wake sideline. He thought he had holding. He thought the tight end, Davis Allen, had hold. He's saying Bassey held. He's saying Bassey as he came up to try to get away from that quick bubble now. I didn't see the hold. I, I, I didn't think it was a hold, but that's what he's arguing with that is, those officials about. Well, maybe he'll buy himself another call at some point, being in the ear of that official. Long throw to the sideline, bobbled, incomplete, flag down in the offensive backfield. Justin Ross was not ready for that pass from Trevor Lawrence. It was thrown before Ross was anticipating it. And it's a chop block called against Clemson. That's a 15-yard penalty, or it's fourth down and two. Mm -hmm. Absolutely declined this penalty. Personal foul, offense, chop block, number 74, number 79. That penalty will be declined, fourth down. Let's watch the left guard Simpson right here, okay? As the left tackle Jackson Carmen engages, watch the left guard set and then dive down. That's why they're calling that chop block, because 79, Carmen, is engaged with the defensive line. And it's high load. If that offensive tackle is engaged with the defensive guy, you can't cut that def defensive guy because of that engagement with the offensive tackle. short kick that's a really good job running forward by Kendall Hinton to get that fair catch made all the way up at the 30 yard line so it's only a 30 yard punt as we answer our Affleck trivia question there's a reason Dan Orlovsky knew the answer to this question. I'm going to let you answer it, the last Wake Forest head coach to win a road game at Clemson. He's one of the finest men I've ever met, Jim Caldwell. Quick story, I had triplet kids. My sons that are triplets. And coach Caldwell was my head coach. We play our last game of the season four days after my sons are born. I break my ankle, all that stuff in the game. He calls me about three weeks afterwards. I said, hello? It was Dan, his coach called and said, hey, what's up? And I'm thinking he wants to talk about the game. One night he goes, just wanted to see how your wife is doing, how are your kids doing? Total example of really who he is. Play action fake off that slow developing mesh point in the backfield. Isaiah Simmons was there to bring down Jamie Newman. And coming up at the half, it'll be the Capital One halftime report. First half highlights from our game, previewing some very important action, especially in the Big 12 later on tonight. That first huge test for Baylor. They'll have to beat Oklahoma twice to get the job done tonight. They get their first crack at it in Waco. I'm excited to watch that game. I'm excited to see if that Baylor defense can slow down Oklahoma's offense and then can Oklahoma's off or defense kind of stop giving up gash plays? There's Carney. Only about a yard, yard and a half. And I would think Dabo Sweeney might want to call a timeout here to see if he can save some time for his offense and count on his defense to get a third down stop. That's just what he does. Got it. So Clemson will call timeout and we'll get another update with Cassidy. Thanks, Bob. Let's take a look at one of AT&T's best performances. Number eight, Minnesota, coming off their win over Penn State, taking on number 20, Iowa freshman Tyler Godson. Throws out two stiff arms on his way to the end zone. Hawkeyes up 13-0 after one. Oh, damn that cue. Oh, the boat is taking on water. <laughs> we, might need a, we might need an electric engine. Yeah, no, we no might need a lifeboat. Yeah. We might need a different boat. They have fun here yeah. at Death Valley. And by the way, if you think those moves are good, or maybe you think they're bad, you have not spent quality time with Dan Orlovsky. The great thing was she's dancing and the, the millennials behind her just staring at their phones. <laughs> what a millennials. How about the respect or lack thereof for this Wake Forest offense shown by Dabo Sweeney? It's only third down and about two and a half to three yards to go. And yet he calls a timeout, buying some extra time for Wake Forest, just not believing they can convert this. Yeah, but, but it, it's the right choice. Trying, You trust your defense to get off the field. There's a one-on-one -on -one matchup down there, and I would expect Wake to go to it. And Jamie Newman looked that way. And there's the slant. 
And it's caught for a first down. Nope, it's broken up. Incomplete. Well, Waydell Jones had inside leverage and a chance to hold on for what would have been a big third down reception and just couldn't complete the catch. How about Darian Kendrick? Left side of the screen, Jones comes in on the slant. Watch Kendrick with the right bop. Punch that ball out right there. This is a guy that used to play wide receiver here at Clemson. Hey, go play corner for us. And he has come on to be one of the better man-to-man -man corners. Not in just the ACC, but in America. And you saw it there. Ride the receiver down, punch the ball out on contact. And that's where you're missing Scotty Washington and Sage Surratt as well. Those guys that are used to using their bigger frames to wall that coverage off. And they can catch another spiraling kick for Maggio. And this is going to hop down inside the five and find the end zone. There is a flag all the way back at the line of scrimmage. That's a 63-yard punt for Maggio. Illegal formation offense. More than four in the backfield. Five-yard penalty to be added on from the 25-yard line. First down. Week 11 has arrived in the NFL, as we said, and it's Monday Night Football from Mexico City. Patrick Mahomes and the AFC West leading Chiefs take on Phillip Rivers and the Chargers. 8 Eastern on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. And can the Chiefs get that defense together? To me, that's the biggest question about that team. I said this this week with the Chiefs defense because the conversation was, Patrick Mahomes, is it good enough if you throw for 450 yards and three touchdowns? Is it enough? Like, that, think, think how insane that is to say, but that's how bad that defense has been over the past month. Easy pitch and catch for Justin Ross, picks up five. I want to see Clemson be aggressive here offensively. Like, you're in a two-minute drill. You've still got timeouts in your bag. You can be aggressive with your play calls here. And the big thing for Trevor Lawrence, especially on first and second down, get it out. Take easy completions. Let the guys catch and run. Lawrence throws one across his body trying to avoid the rush of Carlos Basham. Carlos Basham, number two in the ACC and number 14 in America in sacks with seven and a half coming into today and almost got eight and a half on that rush against Lawrence. You, but you see Trevor Lawrence's strength, right? Like Boogie Basham is a 275-pound guy draped on him. That throwaway is massive if this drive leads to some points because the clock gets stopped on it. Lawrence out of the pocket again. Throws one across his body, rips it up the seam to Overton. A first down across the midfield strike. Gain of 23. Great feel in the pocket, understanding of where you are in the field, and then the athletic ability, the physical talent to run full speed to his left, flip his hips, and find Overton. Still, your thought process here. Get it out of your hands. You got timeouts. Plenty of time on this clock. Get a completion out to the sideline, out to the perimeter. There's easy throws. Justin Ross makes a tackle, makes another, and picks up eight. Brought down on the near sideline after Amari Henderson couldn't bring him down at first, and now it looks like Ross is hurt. Now sitting up. So a moment ago, he was brought down by Ryan Smenda. And he braces himself as he goes down, and that left wrist seemed to kind of get jammed underneath him, and that looked to be what he was holding. Now he's over on the sideline. Second and two. Hopefully nothing serious. Draw play to ETN, right up the middle. Inside the 20-yard line before he's finally gang tackled. Still moving the pile. The officials still have not blown this play dead. A rugby scrum down to the 14-yard line. And now a timeout called by Clemson. And we will step aside one. 
Already 109 yards rushing for Travis Etienne in the first half. Strength. Look how strong he is. Okay, contact balance, contact strength. Cross cover the ball and watch the legs go. Go. Squat down. Pick myself back up. And then the big fellas come. A little bit of push. No one stops for Clemson's offense. No one stops. You want to know why you have one of the better running backs and running attacks in the country? Effort and talent. Lawrence with a pump fake. Looking for the back left corner of the end zone for T. Higgins. He's got another. The second first half touchdown catch for Higgins in between Greer and Henderson. This is why he's going to be the number one pick in the draft. Pump fake, whole shot to the field. Safety's in perfect position. I'll place it exactly where I want it, up top to T. Higgins. The arm strength, the type of throw, the placement of the football. And how about Higgins with the catch and strong hands? That play is why Trevor Lawrence will be the first pick in the NFL draft. And we'll step aside at 21 and 25 in a row consecutively and off to the kind of start they're used to getting off to, 24-3. Against Blake Forrest, Bob Oshusa, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams. That throw was wow. I mean, that throw was wow. He still has some reading of coverages, some maturing to do, some decision-making yeah. uh, maturation process to go through. But you just watch him throw the football, and there's no chance he's not the first pick in the draft. Two years from now, by the way. Not this coming here. He still has to do this for another year at Clemson. Yeah, I think he set the bar so high last year that everyone, no one expected that he would not look flawless, right? And he's now adjusting to how a defense are adjusting to him. Like, defenses had tape on him, so they're adjusting the way they play him. And now he's adjusting to how defenses are playing him. And we've never allowed him to fail or learn, and that's part of his growth process. He's, he's, he's absolutely spectacular. Jamie Newman finds the true freshman Donovan Green. They pick up seven yards. Now 37 seconds to go on the half. Wake Forest still has a timeout. But Trevor Lawrence is going to start the third quarter with the football. That's so why I think you got to be aggressive if, if you're Wake. I know you, some people say, like, go in the half or not. you got to put the ball in the air and see if you can get some, some points before the half because Clemson getting the ball. That's a first down catch. And it's green. And now they're going to see, use the timeout, it looks like. Rather than trying to run up to the line and get ready to snap it. So with 32 seconds to go on the half, Wake is now out of timeouts. Yeah, big thing for Wake here is the, the ball has to go past five yards. Like you've got to be willing. We can't say it enough. We understand Scotty Washington and Sage Surratt are here, but you have been such a dynamic and explosive offense because of the willingness to throw the ball downfield. You're not going to come here and dink and, duck your, dink and dunk your way to a win. So you've got to trust a guy like Kendall Hinton or Stephen Claude or even a Donovan Green. Like You've got to be willing to go down the field. Clemson's going to play one-on-one -on -one coverage and give guys opportunities to make a contested catch. Well, the ball's going to go down the field tonight, guaranteed between Oklahoma and Bay at 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. And they will take over as soon as we are done here at Death Valley. Jamie Newman is number one in the ACC and number nine in America in total offense and in passing yards. But again, without his top two targets, Scotty Washington and Sage Surratt. Surratt for the rest of the year. There's a shot down the rail looking for Green, and it's intercepted. Underthrown, A.J. Terrell picks it off. He's got a run back. He's got blockers, and he's out of bounds near field goal range. The second first half interception thrown by Jamie Newman, and this one might cost Wake Forest more points. Just great coverage by Terrell. Watch him on the left side. Use the sideline of his friend. Left arm. Push Green to the sideline, find the football as he turned back to round, under thrown ball, and then the athleticism. Watch this matchup down here. Just watch Terrell, patient at the line, left hand, ride the receiver all the way down the line of scrimmage, turn, find the football, and catch the underthrown pick, and then the athleticism after that interception. I've, I, 
played with a lot of good corners. That play reminds me a lot of how Darrell Reeves used to play. Squeeze guys to the sideline, make that throw window really small, turn and find the football. That's high praise. If you compare him to Darrell Rivas, Terrell had a 44-yard pick six against Alabama in the championship game last year. And here's Lawrence. He's looking for the end zone again for Higgins. It's a hat trick for T. Higgins here in the first half. touchdowns in 29 seconds for Clemson and it's 31 to 3. This is T Higgins right here. Okay, watch this route. Okay, he's going to start to weave out. Watch what it does. Does this safety he weaves? Easy touchdown. This is Higgins. Watch what he does to the safety. Weave, weave, and how he replaces him. How is a safety in the open field supposed to stay with T. Higgins? Yeah, good luck. It's, I mean, you gotta hope that your rush comes home, but that weave by Higgins, and then the patience by Lawrence in the pocket. And that doesn't be, happen and, without the old line. And what, exactly, what can't be lost in that is he had an eternity to let that route develop because the offensive line didn't let him get touched. Yeah, and they've run some corner routes today on those safeties. They've run some outbreaking routes. So T. Higgins uses that, weaves out. That safety has to open up right across his face. Easy touchdown. And with 13 seconds to go in the half, it'll be another touchback as Potter puts it through the back of the end zone. Well, this season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Mott Student Section of the Year. Clemson Tiger Student Section already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell and see how your school can compete and get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. No timeouts, 13 seconds, and Clemson starting off the, the second half with the football and a 31-3 lead. Not much for Wake Forest to do here other than run it with Beal Smith, and that will end the half. Last four minutes of the first half, four, first four minutes of the second half normally are Clemson's domain. And they own that period of time, that transition. Strike quick, get the ball back. That's why they're the best team in the country. Stay tuned. After the break, stats brought to you by Bright House Financial. And we were asking for Wake Forest to push the ball down the field at some point. They did three times in the first half. And on those three downfield shots, Newman threw two picks. Well, the first interception, Newman certainly tried to get the, get up the sideline. It's underthrown Tanner Muse pick. And then the Terrell won right at the end of the half. It's just an underthrown football. like Amari Rodgers and Justin Ross are out of the game the rest of the way for Clemson. So both teams are down. Big time wide receivers. Darian Kendrick finds a crease and opens up the second half with a good return. Hit the ground and the ball came out. The officials have not ruled him down yet. They're looking at one another. And it's still an officials conference. First down. And now they finally make the announcement that Kendrick was down. And here is our first half Pacific Life game summary. And it was a first half hat trick of touchdown passes from Trevor Lawrence to T. Higgins. Yeah, they got started early with the strong hands by T. Higgins and then Travis Etienne, one of the best backs in America. We saw how physical he was as a runner. And how about Tanner Muse on senior day? Certainly defensively the MVP of this game so far for Clemson. Long check down throw. 
That's Frank Ladson. I love that. Like, that, that is a good play by Trevor Lawrence because it's the only play. Everything else was covered. You can't throw the ball downfield. No, it's not glamorous, but I love the decision. Look, it turns into an 11 or 12 yard game. So the check downs can be his friend. Travis Etienne. Down after a game of about three. And Allison, you had a chance to catch up with Dave Clawson. It is our greatest fear. That's what he told me at the half, that Clemson knows what we're playing with on the outside. Those guys aren't getting any, any separation, winning any of their battles. So Clemson's able to jam the box and just stop the run. That's why they've struggled so much offensively. They want to pass the ball more, but he said it's tough because when we have taken shots, it's been picks. And he said, I told my guys, look, if we're going to throw it, it has to be positive, incomplete. It cannot be a pick. Well, looking downfield, wanting to take a shot was Trevor Lawrence. Now he's extending the play, and he comes back to a secondary receiver, and that's Travis Etienne, who bails out his quarterback, and looks like he is at the first down line to gain, and they will give Clemson a first down. Two things. that th These two plays to start the half are these, my, my two favorite plays of the game so far really? for Lawrence. Because that's quarterbacking. That doesn't take this physical talent, the, the superior talent that he has, we saw in that touchdown pass at the end of the first half. But just the right play nothing's there don't force it downfield take check downs two good quarterbacking plays this time etn bottled up at the line did the ball pop out it ended up with ryan spenda but they're going to say that his forward progress was stopped Looks like that ball was out before he was down, but the key was the official said his forward progress was stopped. That's not reviewable. We're fortunate there. That ball was out fortunate also with the body position. ETN never goes, got hurt there. JC Chuck spun down, and there are flags thrown. And it looks like it might have been a face masking call on Jaquez Williams. I'll go back to it. I love the play by Etienne as you see Chalk. I think there was a clip. No, I think there was a clip of the face mask right away, and then it looks like the shoulder pad at the end. Right? There's definitely a, a clip of that face mask. Mm, probably not worthy of a, really? a flag. No, but like watch. Watch the, the head turn right there. There's a grab of that face mask and then the jersey. I, the, the pocket stays, the, the flag stays in my pocket. Yes. If I'm Dave Clawson, those last two calls have me out of my skin as Overton finds a cutback play and gets all the way down inside the 10-yard line. Overton. You're Dave Clawson. Two plays ago, it looks like your defense forces a fumble and you recover. And rather than saying that the player was down, the officials say his forward progress was stopped. Well, that takes replay out of it. Now you can't review it. Forward progress is a judgment call. And on the very next play, you get 15 yards when a player barely grazes the face mask and you get, grab the inside of the shoulder pads? I agree with you. Here's ETN. Close to the five-yard line. I mean, Wake Forest has to be thinking, Clemson doesn't need any help. <laughs> They're good enough on their own without the officials giving them a 15-yard penalty and denying us a turnover. On the fumble, too, like, that was a really fast whistle. I mean, really fast whistle. That's probably the one that Clawson has a little bit more reason to be upset with these officials. Now it's second and goal. You know, one-on-one matchups on the outside if you're Trevor Lawrence. It collapses. I'm not sure if that was Trevor Lawrence looking to get out of the pocket or if that was designed quarterback run, but he's brought down close to the 10-yard line. And again, let's go back to the ETN call where forward progress was ruled to have been stopped. Wow. That's a really quick whistle. That's that's a miss. Let's let's call it what it is, right? That's a miss by the officiating crew, in which would have been a huge turnover to start the second half for Wake Forest defensively. Now a 
it's third down and goal from the 10. Lawrence rifles one in the back of the end zone. He's got another touchdown pass. This one to the true freshman, Frank Ladson. Third of the year for Ladson. Outstanding job by Trevor Lawrence. Watch his eyes here. Peek to the right, come back across the field, find Ladson. Ball placement high on the face mask. Touchdown, Tigers. You have to think it will be one of the two college football playoff games on a championship Saturday, December 28th. So right now, the Tigers look like they are on a march where they are not only trying to win, but trying to look good doing it. Leading 38-3 here against Wake Forest. Well, we, and they we, can do it on the yeah. defensive side of the ball, too. And the big thing is their secondary, right? Just nowhere to throw the football if you're a quarterback and you're going, okay, here's my read. But the coverage by both corners, Terrell and Kendrick, it's really locked down. And if you're a quarterback, you're looking, okay, coach, where do you want me to throw the football here? Because there's nowhere that I can look at and say I feel confident that my guy is going to win. And here's the thing. Those are two plays of a half of a football game, but that's been the story all season for this defense. Everything that was on their dominant defensive line has transitioned to the linebackers in, in the secondary, and it's the best back seven in football. Here comes the blitz again. Newman on a designed rollout, side arms one to the sideline, looking for Stephen Claude. That's incomplete as we take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Clemson and Ohio State taking care of business. And Georgia, that's a little bit of an eyebrow-raising eyebrow score for us, right? We thought Auburn might put up more of a fight. Maybe they still will. Georgia's defense is carrying them probably to the SEC title game, or it certainly looks that way. Um, the, the receivers have made enough plays. Jake Fromm, I think, is one of the better quarterbacks in our country, but really dominant performance defensively in this last four or five weeks out of Georgia's defense. Speaking of which, another blitz, another tackle for loss, this one from Justin Foster. And it's amazing, you know, they did this earlier on game day, Kirk Ferentz's Iowa Hawkeyes in games where they are a home underdog, I believe, and certainly in games where they're playing one of those ranked opponents. It's amazing how often they become the giant killer and get the job done, and they're doing it again today against Minnesota. I was... I was on Minnesota's bandwagon a little bit after that performance last week, and I thought they should have been ranked higher. I've never played at Kinnick, but people talk about playing at Kinnick in November like it's one of the hardest things in, in college football to do, and it's showing itself today. Kendall Hinton, well short of the first down marker. By at least four yards. There's a flag down on the play. On the jackal, Kayvon Wallace. Offensive pass interference, offense number five. That pill will be declined, fourth down. He's got reason to be frustrated. I'm not sure if that last call specifically that the officials got wrong, but certainly when you're down 38-3 and a few of the whistles have not gone your way, you're going to react the way that Coach Clawson is reacting. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a... Displaced anger there on that from that play and really from the previous drive for Clemson's offense. Angio just gets it away and does a good job of angling it to the sideline. Well inside the 20-yard line. Oh, impressive. ETN bouncing off tacklers. Gets outside. And eventually ends up losing a couple of yards. Just that by Boogie Basham. Bradman, 
Well, for Trevor Lawrence, by the time he finally gets to the NFL, it will feel like we have been watching him play for a decade. But this is really nothing new to him. When he was in high school as an eighth grader, he went to spring practice with the varsity football team and then beat out a senior and became a four-year high school starter. And all he did was go 52-2 and two and break all of Deshaun Watson's Georgia passing records. Then he came to Clemson. And here he is handing it off to ETN. And he shows up as part of a four-quarterback group on the depth chart, but again as a freshman. And four games into his freshman season, he's able to win the job while he does win the national championship. And now he's a sophomore, and it seems like we've been watching him forever. It's just he seems to be very comfortable, no matter what the level, going in as the rookie, competing against guys that are three and four years older than him, saying, you know what, I can hold my own, I'm fine. Well, I think there's a couple things tied to that. One, incredible talent, but two, incredible self-belief, right? Like, there is a supreme amount of confidence in his ability, and then the work ethic is tied to it as well. With anticipation, rips it outside to T.J. Chase for a first down. He's been terrific all day. And this, this last touchdown is so impressive. Watch him take to his right. Okay, number one's not there. Let me get through it. Number two, I don't like that coverage. Slide in the pocket, number three, and an absolute laser to Ladson for a touchdown. I've talked about getting through progressions and seeing the coverage. We well, answered it right there. That was... We've had moments today. That was another moment where you point him and say, number one pick in the NFL draft. Steps up in the pocket. A rifle shot down the sideline. Incomplete for Engata. You know, the one number that I thought was interesting, though, that our ESPN Stats of Information folks gave us before today's game, Trevor Lawrence against the Blitz coming into today. 12 touchdowns, no interceptions. But against the conventional pass rush, where you send four or less, 11 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Yeah. So when you blitz him, he lights you up. When you mm -hmm. play coverage, he struggles a little bit more. What does that tell you? Just patience. I, I, you gotta be a Charlie check down at some point. There you go, we'll screen to Lynn J. Dixon. And he's in the open field. Lynn J. Dixon getting blocks. All the way down inside the 10-yard line. That check down worked just fine. When you can throw it to a back that is a backup, it's as good as Lynn J. Dixon, absolutely. And you get those big hogs out in front, blocking out in space. But no, it's just Trevor Lawrence just understanding that just because you love a throw and you've made that throw before doesn't mean you have to. And sometimes the five-yard check down, I've always said this, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, I don't have to watch them play to know what their box score is going to look like. It, they, they are willing to play a boring brand of football at times, and that's just the growth he needs. Well, Lynn J. Dixon makes it look easy. It's another Clemson touchdown. Dixon follows up his 55-yard screen with a 9-yard touchdown rush. And the Tigers doing what you knew they had to do because of the perception of the ACC, and that is poured on when they have the chance. At the left side of the line, block out, the center and the right side of the line, Pollard closed down, and Lynn J. Dixon, just a nice jump cut in the hole. But here's the thing that I love about the football team. You go into half 31-3. It would have been incredibly easy to come out and walk through this second half. Not this team. Urgency, led by their coach and their quarterback, has them up 45-3 at home. Wallace. He gave a smile to his head coach, but then it was a tearful embrace with his mom, Roxanne. You see, Roxanne raised him on her own, oftentimes working three jobs to provide for her family. They lived in a neighborhood marked by gangs, drugs, and violence. At times, they move about the house by candlelight because the electricity would be turned off. But through it all, she persevered, and so did her son. And today, he took the field for the final time. I spoke to her, and she could barely speak before the game. She was so emotional as the tears fell down her cheeks I said did you ever imagine this would be possible she said no but I always knew something was different about him Kayvon was special from the time he was a youngster and I knew he would go on and do great things now I asked her if there will be a more emotional day to come because you see in December he will become the first member of his family to graduate from a four-year institution and she looked at me and she said man that's going to be a tough one too she is just so proud as she should be and really just an emotional and special night for her and Avon. Did you see mom reach 
reaching into the bag to get the phone. You know why? Because it's about to blow up. Because hmm. now everyone's going to be texting her. Talking about that is the quintessential senior day story and what makes college football so special. I mean, what an amazing moment. I think that's, you know, my senior day, it just takes you back to the moment when you decide to go to school. And you don't know if it's going to be the right choice or not or how it's going to turn out. And I would imagine Kayvon Wallace just shared those emotions and tears with his mom of, it was the right choice. It, you know, it, it worked out, and it was one of the greatest things that could have ever happened to him and his family. Fruitenthal picks up eight yards, and there's Mom on the phone. Get ready. The messages are all going to start to flow in. That's, it really was brought home even this week, talking on some of the talk shows that we're part of. You on Get Up, and I filled in for Stephen A. Smith a couple times on the radio this week. There's a play action fake and Newman going to shoot one over the middle. That's incomplete for A.T. Perry. But talking to Marcus Spears this week, talking to Ryan Clark this week about LSU beating Alabama. And that reaction that the LSU team got when they got back to Baton Rouge, what was waiting for them at the airport? And look, I call the Jets on the radio. You spent over a decade in the NFL. The NFL is the top league in the world. It's the best athletes. It's the best competition. But there's just something different about college football and how these players, for the rest of their lives, relate to these programs, what it means to them. I think it's the, just the emotional tie, the relationships that you build with guys. You know it's your choice. A lot of times in the NFL, it's not. You know, you go where who selects you. And that's the difference. College football, you pick the school. And there's that emotional tie that it's it's hard to replicate if you if it, anything can ever come close to it. And to that point, I asked Trevor Lawrence about that, right? Like, what do you love about playing in college and playing at Clemson? And he said, it's just that, Dan. It's the relationships you build with the guys on the team. He said, obviously, it's different than high school, but there's that kind of similar feel. You see each other around the city. You see each other in class, and everyone kind of has that same passion, that same goal. He said, I just love playing the game with these guys. It's just a really special, special thing. I also think part of it is too because once you decide to go to a school there's a group of people that because of that decision and the colors you wear will automatically love you and that there's a group of people because of the color you wear will automatically hate you and that's unique to college football. Bob Wachusen, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams back here at Clemson and why not a quarterback change? Trevor Lawrence has certainly proven his point today and Chase Bryce the redshirt sophomore who Dabo Sweeney said never even thought about transferring once Lawrence got the job. Said that he is as invested as anyone. Now hand one off to Lynn J. Dixon. Trevor Lawrence tying a career high today with four scoring passes. He's on fire. It started early. A little play fake. Ball placement to T. Higgins. How about this whole shot? Pump fake. Again, ball placement to T. Higgins. Right before the half, hang in the pocket. Throw the ball down the middle of the field. And how about starting the second half, getting through a progression, one, two, three, and then an absolute rope to the back of the end zone to Ladson. He's playing quarterback position as good as anyone in college football these last four weeks. Blitz off the edge, picked up, and Bryce has an easy pitch and catch. First down. And Davis Allen, the tight end, lowers his shoulders. And rams his way out to the 35-yard line for a gain of 15. I'd be smiling if I were him, too. Quick work, 21, 27, 270, and four tutties. Because he knows what's coming. And this team is building and building and building, and it's led by their quarterback who has improved week by week by week. Trick play. There's Will Sweeney, the coach's son. And a rare negative play here in the second half for the Clemson offense, but it's been five games, Dan, since they avoided disaster at Chapel Hill. And it seems like they have sent a message since that 21-20 win. Now, this doesn't even include today. They will add to these numbers today, but this, the last five games coming into this afternoon, 
since they escaped against North Carolina by a point. And if you talk to Dabo and the coaching staff about this, that, that game and what it did to them, it was it made them realize they got to keep two hands on the wheel. Like, they got to accelerate through the finish, keep two hands on the wheel, don't get comfortable, because that's when the accident happens, when you get closest to your destination. Now, give credit to North Carolina for how they played, but he believes it was a really good moment for him and Trevor Lawrence and this, this team this year to have fought and be, be behind in a football game and have to go and make the play to go win the game. And it happened, and he thinks it's going to be, a, it has been a springboard and really good kind of build, build in for their future rest of the season. Another blitz. It's picked up, and Bryce throws a pick. Well diagnosed. Keegan Good, a third string safety that was able to drop back along the sideline and get his first career interception. So Bryce gives one up. That's the first Clemson turnover of the day. And Good just drops underneath. Watch the right side of the screen. It's a little comeback to Ngata and Good just drops right underneath and it's like Chase Bryce never even saw him. and turns it over, but Wake Forest trying to buck the trend and actually score some points off the turnover. They don't have a play from scrimmage longer than 10 yards today. Bouncing it outside is Walker. And he's got a first down. Yeah, I think if you're Wake here and you're Warren Ruggiero, their offensive coordinator, and Dave Clawson, the head coach, like, you just want to see your team go and run some good plays here. We know what the outcome of the football game is going to be. But last year, when this game got out of hand, Wake Forest's effort did not look good when they played Clemson in the second half. You just want to see the effort still there and your team focusing on still playing good football because this is a really good football team that still has a couple weeks left to play that matter. And they're going to a bowl game. They've already won seven games this season. Nowhere to go on that run. So it will be second down and long. And they think they're going to get Scotty Washington back before the season's over. He had an ankle sprain against NC State a couple of weeks ago. And just worse than they thought. Yeah. And so they believe that they may be able to get him back. Of course, St. Surratt, they know they're not getting back. As he's got a shoulder injury that required surgery. So he's done for the season. And Justin Stranod tore his biceps against Florida State, also needed surgery. That's your best linebacker. He was number three in the ACC in tackles per game when he went down. So it's arguably your two most valuable offensive weapons and arguably your second best defensive player, and you lose all three for an extended period of time, if not the season. And I'd be willing to say that Scotty Washington, Sage Surratt, and Kendall Hinton are the second best receiving trio in the ACC outside of Clemson's, right? And so that's saying a lot because there's some talented groups in this conference. And so imagine having to, to play without those guys and the impact that it has on your offense. We're watching it unfold. Scotty Washington, 6'5", 225. That's a big bodied weapon to have for the deep ball. Third down and four. Quarterback keeper for Newman. And he gets stood up after a gain of about a yard. So they're going to say he was brought down right about at the line of scrimmage. Jordan Williams popped him at the 28-yard line. So it'll be fourth down and about four. I think that's a bad spot. That's what Dave Clawson's arguing about because I think that Jamie Newman had gotten bounced forward or gotten forward and bounced backwards. So there should be some forward progress. And maybe replay will take a look at it while we head to the fourth quarter. 
have some time and also some more to Clemson. Another look at our Pacific Life game summary. Trevor Lawrence tying a career high with four touchdown passes. And Travis Etienne, for the second consecutive year, Dan, putting up over 100 against Wake Forest. Yeah, he had a big game. Started early, physical runner. Tre obviously, Trevor Lawrence with a massive afternoon. And a fourth down play for Wake Forest to start the fourth quarter. Amy Newman broke it up. Tried to rifle one into Jaquari Roberson. And that one was read by Benzel Johnson. for Clemson and Chase Bryce off the interception with Darian Wrencher now in the backfield as the tailback. Hand off to Wrencher. And he stays on his feet. And spins for about eight. Let's take a look at today's crunch time brought to you by Cheese It. And it goes back to what might be the crucible moment of this season for Clemson. North Carolina had scored a touchdown with a minute 17 remaining, but their two-point conversion to try and win it failed for Mac Brown, and Clemson held on for Dabo. 21 to 20 was the final, and they have been on a mission, seemingly so ever since, as Rencher picks up a first down. They've been unstoppable since that near calamity at Chapel Hill. And there's not often that you could point to a single play and say, that play saved our season, right? Because you play so many games, and oftentimes, Games come down to a bunch of different plays. But you can point to Clemson's season, especially if they go on to the playoff, which they will, and potentially go win the national title. You could point to him and be like, that play won us another national title. A yard falling forward as Kenneth Dix brings down Rencher. Well, it's a bye week after this week, a week to be idle for Clemson to heal up and get ready for their Thanksgiving weekend rivalry game against South Carolina. This year, that game's in Columbia, so they have to win that one on the road. They've already locked up another trip to the ACC title game as they are looking to win their fourth consecutive. As Rencher gets down the sideline, and he's in plus territory with a first down. They're actually going to win their fifth consecutive ACC championship game. The only other team in the championship game era in a Power Five conference to do that was Florida back in the early 90s, 93 through 96. The Gators did it, and now Clemson. I, sitting with Dabo yesterday, because I knew the bye week was coming, and they, 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 this will be their first bye week of the season. I know what it's like to have be a player when we got a bye week coming and it's been a long year and I went to Dabo. I said, so, you know, have you handled anything? Have you talked to the team differently to make sure that they're focused? And have you given them the schedule for next week? And he looked at me like, dude, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and he was like, no, man. He's like, this best of one. And, and, and it's not just words for him. Like, that is the program that he has built. It is a best of one. This is the week that we have. This is the one game that we have. Next week will handle itself. Price rifles one to the sideline and drops it into Engata for a first down. A terrific throw from a young quarterback that Dabo Sweeney told us. So, guys, he might be the backup to Trevor Lawrence. He's going to play on Sundays. I think he's that good. Yeah, and, he, and, and when he comes in the game, they don't change any of their play calling. But they stay aggressive with their play calling. They think he is an outstanding player, and he's had a lot of good moments when he's been on the field. Go back to last year in the Syracuse game, but a lot of good moments when he goes in the football game and executes this offense really well. Pressure and a good decision by Chase Price as the screen that he wanted to set up to Luke Price in the opposite direction was blown up with Tyler Williams, Tyler Williams putting pressure on Bryce, and so he just dirts the ball. He graduates this spring, you know, so it'll be interesting. Dabo had, you know, mentioned he graduates this spring. He's completely committed to Clemson, but it'll be interesting to see if he wants to do something with his, his own future, because knowing 16's not going anywhere. Although he does have a couple of years of eligibility left. So if he hangs in, as he throws one up the seam, at the five, at the goal line, 
It's in Gata. Is he in? Yes, it's a touchdown. Twenty-one yard touchdown strike from Chase Bryce to Joseph Ngata. Little ball fake. Watch Bryce flip the hips. And got to the big six foot three receiver. Secured hand catch and then reaching over that goal line. Watch as he full extension. Yeah, that's a touchdown. Beautiful route by Ngata for a young freshman. Stem stuck his outside foot. Got the corner to flip his hips. Strong hands catch. That's something that stands out about these Clemson receivers. Yes. Point out to me the last time you saw them catch a ball with their body. Five touchdowns in the last six possessions. Trevor Lawrence and now Chase Bryce put the ball in the end zone. When did this all start? When did you realize, like, hey, I kind of look like Trevor Lawrence? Um, I really, it really hit me when I made the first video. Our side profiles match up really like nicely we have the same nose teeth and like jawline and of course the hair and of course the hair and so it was really kind of freaky i posted i was like i really do the first <laughs> it was really funny did you have any idea that it would take off and kind of blow up like it has absolutely no idea i really just made it to like make my friends laugh and show my family and stuff and I woke up with like a hundred thousand likes and it blew my mind and that's a lot on TikTok, right? I'm not familiar with the app, but I'm guessing that's quite a bit. Yeah, I was kind of new to the app too And so I woke up and I was like, oh my goodness Like all these people like think this is actually funny and I was like This is awesome So then you came today to the game for the first time ever at a Clemson game, right? Right and tell me about the moment on the Tiger Walk so um, Dabo starts walking and my dad yells that's the TikTok girl and Davo turns to me with wide eyes and open arms he's like oh my gosh you're awesome and he gave me the biggest hug he was so nice and Trevor I don't think he was expecting it he was kind of taken aback and he was like oh we need a picture and I was like yeah I agree and so then they got the picture that's all over Twitter and stuff so he was really nice how cool is it that both Davo Sweeney and Trevor Lawrence know who you are it was like kind of surreal so I was like I watch these people on TV and I admire these people and I just hugged Dabo like like oh my gosh and what did he ask you he was like can you throw like Trevor I was like oh kind of like you're an athlete yourself right you play volleyball in high school yes I play volleyball so what is the craziest thing that's happened to you since um you have become an internet sensation, a meme, the video's gone viral. What's the coolest or craziest thing that you've experienced? So actually at one of my volleyball games, um, the boys in this opposite team stand started... Trevor's watching us right now. Hi, hi Trevor! <laughs> uh, they started chanting Trevor at me, and they were like, Trevor, Trevor! And then after the game, we were sitting on the bus, and the boys all came up to the window with like their Snapchats and stuff, like, you're awesome, like, we love you! And it was just insane. Awesome. Well, Bella, it is nice to meet you. I love that you've embraced this and ran with it and enjoyed the 15 minutes of fame. Thank you so much, Bob. That is funny. Trevor Lawrence sees her on the sideline and starts <laughs> waving during the interview. Shout out to Dad, who, like, <laughs> randomly was like, hey, Dabo, it's the TikTok girl, even though it was his daughter. <laughs> Another cool moment in college football when the coach's son gets to field a punt. Although Will Sweeney steps out of bounds. So Dabo's son hauls that one in. A 50-yard kick from Maggio. has been the star today for Wake Forest. A step aside. 52 to 3. I think he made the list. So I'm thinking he might have been our choice. As Chase Bryce sets up shop. And he'll hand one off to Ches Malusi. And a late flag is thrown after a game of about a yard, but we voted him as the greatest of all time, at least in Clemson history. Honorable mention players, the fridge on there with Brian Dawkins, Dwight Clark, C.J. Spiller. Offense number 65, 15-yard penalty. Foul occurred after the play, second down. Now, we left Terry Kennard off this list. That might have been a miss. Yeah, how about... I can't believe that you guys left off Woodrow Dancer. There you go. When I say you guys, I mean you. Right. 
You mean blaming all of us <laughs> for doing that? Yeah. I understand. I grew up on Woodrow Wilson. Oh, the football historian that you are. You are a, you're an encyclopedia. I've learned so much as the season has gone on. And another flag thrown as Bockhorst was called. Offense number 27, five-yard penalty, second down. So after Matt Bockhorst picks up a 15-yard penalty, Malusi now adds on another five. Seriously, Woodrow Dantzler was was kind of Deshaun before Deshaun. You know, one of the first kind of dual threat quarterbacks. First first quarterback ever to go 3,000 yards passing, 1,000 yards rushing. How's that for Michigan? Tremendous. Bryce taking a shot down the sideline. Just about dropped it in. Cornell Powell, the intended receiver. And that looked to be about as good a throw as Chase Bryce could make. And speaking of Clemson history, earlier Fred Cohn was honored here at Death Valley, the oldest living member of the Clemson Ring of Honor, 93 years old. And he received a well-deserved standing ovation from the capacity crowd. So we'll step aside just for a moment before third down and long. The Disney Bundle is now available. You get ESPN Plus with great content like NFL Primetime, UFC, NHL, and the 30 for 30 library. And you get Disney Plus and you get Hulu. It's an amazing package of movies, sports, and shows. Head to ESPNPlus.com to sign up now. Got it. I already got it. I already watched a couple episodes of The Mandalorian. Outstanding. Is it? Oh. Draw play on third down and a mile. Michael Dukes gets all the way out to about the 29-yard line. Let's get another update with Cassidy. Thanks, Bob. Now for today's All-State Mayhem moment in the Ohio State route over Rutgers. Justin Fields to Chris Alave, who makes this catch essentially with his legs. It would lead to a touchdown as the number two Buckeyes are rolling in the fourth. Take a look at that. Wow. Bob, damn, back to you. That's an amazing catch. And a message being sent by Ohio State in a game where you knew they had to win in lopsided fashion, and they're doing just that against Rutgers. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've talked about Ohio State today. I, I think that Ohio State and Clemson are the two most complete football teams in the country. A knuckleball punt will roll all the way down inside the 20-yard line to about the 18 from Steven Sawicki. Well, we're all about the Millennials. We're all about the instant GIF. Is it a GIF or a GIF? I think GIF is a peanut butter. GIF? And we're going to go GIF? I think it's GIF, though, technically. No millennials. Well, there you are. You got Allison with Bella Martina, who is the doppelganger of Trevor Lawrence. He saw the two of them conducting the interview in the stands and turned around and waved. And listen, I promise you, 16 is going to get some grief from his big boys up front for that one. Like, hey, Trevor. Let's not be waving into the stance to the girl that, that looks like you. Video. Yeah, like let's. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna catch some ribbing from his guys. Tavon Bowers has taken over at quarterback. Kendra Flowers. He is up the middle for about three for Wake Forest. Got a matchup to the top teams of the Big 12. Number 10 meets number 13, Oklahoma and Baylor. That's coming up as soon as we're done here at Death Valley. It is Saturday Night Football, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, 7:30 Eastern, right here on ABC and the ESPN app. How about the job that Matt Rule's done at Baylor? I mean, they were 1 and 11 two years ago, and they're sitting at 9 and 0 in the chance tonight. I mean, incredible coaching job. Although at 9-0, you can tell what the selection committee still thinks of Baylor. They've got them up in the top 15, but not even the top 10 yet. The second FBS team to reach 9-0 since 1937 with a couple of seasons of starting 0-8. UCF was the other team that pulled that off. So it is an amazing job done by Matt Rule. No one ever expected to Baylor to be relevant this quickly 
but tonight is really like t you could tell the committee mm -hmm. looked at tonight's game and said now's your chance yeah, prove you, it to us you get to prove it to, to us against the Oklahoma team that is really really good offensively and I think Baylor has a little bit of an advantage I mean they have a defense that can play good football they might be able to slow down that offense and Charlie Buller can get hot as a quarterback against an Oklahoma defense that has struggled the last two weeks Flowers bounces a run and picks up the first down now what's the likelihood that the winner of that game tonight because I would really put Oklahoma they're already ahead even with one loss Kurt, of Baylor in the playoff rankings the winner of that game tonight does what Clemson's trying to do and put together a legit playoff resume to actually be in the top four when we get to the end of the season I, I don't think that there's anything that Clemson or Oklahoma can do tonight to catapult them up over the next ranking or two because Baylor is ranked behind them. But if Baylor goes out and wins tonight and wins handily, then that is putting the committee on, on notice that, hey, we're an undefeated Big 12 Power 5 team and we just whooped up on a team that you have in your top 10. So I think Baylor winning would do more for the conference and their chance of getting someone in than Oklahoma. Did. Better chance of one of those kind of dark horse conference winners to make the top four. The winner and ultimate champion between, between say, Baylor and Oklahoma, or the winner and ultimate champion, say, between Oregon and Utah? I think the winner from the Pac-12. Like, if, if Oregon goes on and, and wins the Pac-12 and beats Utah, obviously, they would have won 12 games in a row. Their one loss would have been against Auburn on the last play of the game when they were out four starters. I think that they would have a lot of proof and evidence to go, we're one of the four best teams in the country that's saying okay Ohio State wins out and gets in that's saying that Clemson wins out and gets in that's saying LSU wins out and gets in and a conversation we were having off the air so much hinges on how the committee now views Alabama no, and sure. are they one of the best teams because Tua it looks like has a very serious hip injury right. he was airlifted to a Birmingham hospital he's there now you don't know I mean, right now, there are reports he might be done for the season. It certainly wouldn't be a surprise if that turned out to be true. If Alabama loses to him, if they don't have their star quarterback, is their candidacy for the top four looked at differently by the committee? I, I think it is. I'm, I'm glad that that's probably going to be one of those moments where I'm glad I'm not on the committee because their job is incredibly hard to begin with. But I've done the mock selection committee thing and they talk about every variable and they talk about injury whether it's having a positive impact for a certain team or a negative impact and they will look at Alabama and go far and away what they are good at is their offense right now and if the guy that's controlling the offense isn't there are they still one of the four best teams in the country right I think that you know their game against Auburn will go a long way in determining that at the end of the year in the Iron Bowl but do I think that Tua, if if the injury is what it's kind of guess being reported to be, do I think that Alabama's, the viewpoint of Alabama by the selection committee will drop? Absolutely. Will Sweeney's going to let this one bounce into the end zone. So Clemson will try and put the finishing touches on 52 to 3 when we come back. Uh, looks like there was a late penalty flag thrown back out near midfield. After today's we'll game has to ended, this out. please wait 30 seconds before entering the field for the gathering at the fall. At that time, please enter the field from access points only and from on upper stadium walls. Thank you. What was your number, Jim? After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 46. The penalty would be half the distance to the goal from the dead ball spot. Receiving team keeps the ball, first down. Three deep at quarterback for Clemson as Ben Batson takes over. And he will hand one to Michael Dukes. And he leaps out to about the 14 yard line. You know, it's been a good afternoon when your backup now is taken out of the game and he's got a headset on because the third string is in. That's him. Close to a first down. A sports center tonight from Los Angeles after Arizona, Oregon. Big one of the Pac 12. And then Linda Cohn and Stan Barrett will give you an update on the injury to Tua Tungabailoa. 
and the effect it could have on the playoff race. Plus, after Saturday's results, Heather Dinich on how the Pac-12's playoff prospects look. Also, a report from the Colin Kaepernick workout. Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app later on tonight. Dukes heads south instead of north on third down and one. You know, the teaching never stops for Dabo Sweeney and the penalty right before we went to break. Look at 46, right on the 33-yard line right now. Is he going to the 40? Okay, as he searches up his guy. All right, go block him. Okay, whistle's not done. And then that moment right there is what draws the flag. And then watch Dabo. Just watch Dabo go talk to him. Hey, what are you doing? This is not what we do here at Clemson. And I promise you he's telling... Dabo is one of those coaches that truly believes in what you say and how you say the impact it has on the person, not just the football player, the person. And he takes advantage of every moment he can to make sure the message gets across of what's the expectation like, what's the expectation level like every moment that you have orange on. Well, there's a culture here. There's no question about it. And it, it's a reason why all of his assistants have stayed with him forever. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're an offensive coordinator like Jeff Scott or Brent Venables, you know you've gotten calls over the past seven to eight years with all the success they've had to think about going someplace else as a head coach. Those guys stay. They stay because they believe in the culture here, in the family atmosphere, not only the fact that they do so much winning, but how they do it and how this program is run. Yeah, I've got so many friends in the coaching business, and the number one thing they say is it all depends on who you coach for, right? And, and who the head coach is and the lifestyle that he allows you to lead when you're coaching. And is it fun to go to work? And does he belittle you or lift you up? And are you part of a culture or a program that is enjoyable to be around every day? And that's what Dabo has here. And to your point, Bob, that's why those coaches don't leave. They don't chase the dollar because they realize what they have here, it's not, we throw around, it's special a lot. This is special. What, what, what's here is, is special. Illegal formation, offense, five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Receiving team keeps the ball. First down. Well, you were up there at the start of the game. Yeah. Some fans next to Howard's Rock at the top of the hill, and that's got to be about the most taken picture for a Clemson fan that you could find. And you were there as the seniors came in on senior day and then Clemson, their final run down the hill of this season. Really cool. I'm thankful that I got to go do it. I'm thankful that uh, our crew allowed me to be a part of something like that, and Clemson allowed me to be a part of something like that. And I'm telling you, I've been a part of some cool stuff because of football, because of this game. That was one of the coolest four or five minute stretches that I've ever been a part of. And uh, I'll remember it for, for a long time. That's Dan Orlovsky on Bible Shoes. Allison Williams down on the field. And if you're wondering why that student section is still packed. The traditional gathering at the Paw takes place at the end of every Clemson game and win, and they're about to extend the nation's longest home win streak. This will be number 22 in a row at Death Valley and number 26 in a row overall. You can use the word special for a lot of this place. We got a special campus special culture and a special football team this year led by a special coach and a special quarterback the only game that remains for clemson is now the rivalry game against south carolina and it's on to the acc championship game and if they take care of business hard to imagine they will not be in that final college football playoff rankings release, part of the top four, and headed back to yet another college football playoff. 